Hey there, it's Sonia from learningwellathome.com. And I just want to talk about the multiplication table and memorizing math facts in general. So we get this question a lot, how do you drill? Or what resources do I use to drill and master basic math facts? This usually applies to multiplication. And the answer I have is that I don't. I don't drill. And I just want to let you know why. So this video is about why I don't drill and then what we do instead. So as adults, we have some number of math facts at our disposal. Uh, some of us have memorized the multiplication facts out to 20 and some of us have retained only a few and we have to think about whatever it, fact it is that we come across and drag it out of our memory uh, so we can have access to it. However, but however many of these facts you have memorized, it's very few in comparison to all possible facts that could be memorized. For instance, it's unlikely that you have 45 times 8 memorized. Okay, it's not important that you uh, have it memorized. What's important is that you know how to multiply. Therefore, it really doesn't matter to me whether a child knows or does not know uh, what number is the same as 6 times 8. But it does matter a great deal to me whether a child can mentally calculate the answer to six times eight with whatever knowledge he or she has at their disposal. So whatever's in their head, whatever set of facts they have multiplied, or whatever set of facts they have stored in their memory, can they get to six times eight? That's what I'm concerned about. And working out these calculations uh, requires a large number a huge number of algebraic transformations. And the mastery of these transformations is a great deal more important to me than correct answers to a set of facts, isolated facts on top of that. So my focus is always on calculation rather than on memorization. You know, so if I asked you what two times 24 is, you're likely to immediately reply 48. And it's not because you have this fact memorized uh, but that your thinking happens so fast, it's as if it were memorized. And that's what's important. So the hyper-focus on memorization is a problem, not just because uh, it takes up a lot of time and energy, but there's a lot of kids uh, that fall behind in math simply because they have weak memories. They, they don't have, they don't drill well. Um, or in my son's case, he doesn't write well. He's not fast at this. But those same children, and this includes my son, uh, those same children might be really, really good at manipulations. And the manipulations are a significantly better determinant of math understanding than parroting back isolated facts. So it's true, we don't drill. Instead, we spend time on uh, having and doubling we also spend a tremendous amount of time on prime factors. And in this video, I'm going to just explore having and doubling and uh, the simple steps that you can use to calculate most of the times table, um, even if all you know for sure are the ones in the tens tables. And then in the next video, we'll explore uh, prime factoring and mastering the times table in general. So if you see here, what, what, what you have in front of you is a times table and I've color coordinated it, color coordinated, I color coded it to the Cuisinair rods. So up top here, let me grab the spotlight. Right, up top here we have the ones and then the twos, all multiples of two are in red. So the two table is. So you go here and that two table is right here. The threes are in green. The fours are purple, fives are yellow, sixes are dark green, sevens are black, eights are tan, nines are blue, and orange is 10. And one of the things you'll notice is that this is half the size of a regular multiplication table, and that's on purpose. Okay, the other half of this table is just a duplicate of this half of the table. You don't have to memorize them all, and nor should you do them separately. Six times eight and eight times six are the same thing. And we don't want our kids memorizing them and thinking of them as separate facts. Some kids won't. Many, many kids will. So we want to end that right away. 
And so let's look at what happens. If I just know that one of the sevens is seven, one of the sixes is six, if I, if I know that and I can double in my head, then that gives me access immediately to the, the two times table. If I have the twos, then I also have, if I double the twos, it also gives me the fours. And if I have the fours, I also have the eights. Now, I assume because you're here and you're working on memorizing math facts that your child knows that one of the tens is 10, two of the tens is 20, three of the tens is 30. This is place value information. If your child doesn't know that, you need to go back and fix the place value thing and understanding the tens and then come back. So we're going to just assume your child understands the tens and we're going to mark off the tens times table. All right, well, that's still quite a bit left on the tens type table, but if we could have tens, we'd take out fives, right? And having is just as important as doubling. So you could, because fives are easy, they have that uh, zero five, zero five pattern to it. You could just um, memorize or work out that pattern and count on your fingers or however you want to do it uh, to do that. But I would suggest that having tens is really important for uh, understanding having in general. And we're going to be using it having a lot, or even if you're not taking my course, uh, having comes in really handy in math, having that ability to do that. So you wanna make sure that you do that because if you have an odd number of tens, you get the five, that's where you're gonna end up with your five in the units and you wanna see that connection. So don't skip having tens, even if, even if you have the fives facts memorized. All right, so we've taken out the fives. That's a lot less. That's a lot less on this table to deal with. However, um, that's still quite a bit if you have to memorize them. Still quite a bit. That's not most of the times table like I promised. So let's look at this nines column uh, right here. All right, so there's only four there, but let's just try and whack those out. But let's whack out the nines all at once by doing a little notice and wonder on the nine, on the nines table over here. So I'm gonna write out all the facts, one to 10. And then we're gonna slap some solutions in there. And then we're gonna do a little notice and wonder. And what I notice here in this column here is that it goes, Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're counting up in the tens column and we're counting down in the nines column. So if I add these two digits together, it's called a digit sum. When we add digits together, we get a digit sum. If I add the digits together for any product of nine, I'm going to get nine, right? One, eight, two, seven, three, six, four, five, five, four. These are all nines. If I know the first digit of the product, then I can find the last digit by adding up to nine. So how am I gonna get that first digit? That's the question. Well, I notice that there's another pattern here. I have a one here. I have a one. One is my multiplier. I'm going to have a zero in my tens place. If two is my multiplier, I have a one in my tens place. If three is the multiplier, I have a two in, my ten, in the tens place four, I have a three, this goes on. So if I have a two, I have my first digit now. And now I can add up to nine and get the solution. I notice that one times nine is one less than one times 10. That two times nine is two less than two times 10. Three times nine is three less than three times 10. So if I don't like the nine, I can always multiply by 10 and then subtract the multiplier. So that gives me the nine times table. So we can whack out those. So now I have this set right here. I have a three, two of the sixes and three of the sevens. So what are my options? I can double three and then I can add three and that'll give me nine or I could just simply memorize. 
And let's say that you're going to go the route where you, your child just, you're not a tripler, you don't really like that option. So you're going to require that some fact be memorized. So the first fact that we're going to require that we memorize is three times three. So if we have memorized three times three, we're gonna put, we're gonna put a circle on this one because that's one we have to memorize. All right, if we memorize three times three, that gives us access to this one over here because I can memorize three times three and I can double three times three to give me three times six. And if I have three times six, I can double three times six to give me six times six. All right, the next column that we have to work with is the sevens right here. All right, we can double seven and add seven, so that's a triple to get 21. We could do that if we want, but let's say we're going to expend, we're gonna just decide to spend some of our mental energy, and instead we're going to memorize that in black, seven times three. Well, if we have memorized seven times three and we have 21, then I also have, if I have seven times three, I now have seven times six. So that one's done. And that leaves me down here, right here, this very last one, is seven times seven is 49. And I can do add seven to six times seven to get 49, that's an option. But let's just pretend that you want to have that one um, because it's not easily doubled. We're just going to memorize that one. So we could do seven times seven here. And none of those have to be memorized. However many you want to memorize is up to you. But if you were going to memorize, memorize math facts, these are the ones that I would focus on. Oh wait, seven times three, not seven times three. Let's erase that and make that a seven. These are the facts that I would worry about. And you're gonna say, well, hey, 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 you said uh, up to 12, and that's true. I did say up to 12. And let's look at, let's do the 11th. 11 times one is 11, two times 11 is 22, three times 11 is 33, four times 11 is 44. That's an easy pattern. There's not a lot to memorize there. However, you're gonna to get to tens, 11s, and 12s, and the question is, does that pattern stick? or does it change? And I'm gonna say the pattern sticks and it changes slightly. So you need to go figure out the 11s. What happens with 11 times 10, 11 times 11, 11 times 12, and then carry that all the way out to 11 times 20 and see what happens. All right, what about the 12s times table? So what are we gonna do with that, with that one? Well, that's easy, we just double the sixes. So that's done. So here's on the, on the one to 12, times table, the only ones that you should have to or even consider memorizing are these right here. All right, that's it for today. And the next time we do this, we're going to work on multiplication two. In that video, we'll work on uh, factoring and uh, using factors to manipulate the numbers uh, to make hard or are problems that we don't like, multiplication problems we don't like, and turn them into multiplication problems that we do like. All right, see you guys next time.